Assalamu alaikum everyone, welcome to episode 4. I hope you guys are enjoying this Presence of Paradise series. So this one is called Small Charity Great Rewards and it is a short story which was narrated by Dr. Saleh. This is a real story that took place about 100 years ago in Saudi and it's real. It says it multiple times, this is real. <laughs> so get ready. So this story took place here about 100 years ago and it was also broadcasted on the radio stations. It's about a man called Ibn Jadan. He, Ibn Jalan, said, During spring times, I used to go out. I would see good and healthy fat camels with their uterus filled to the extent of almost exploding. Whenever the little offspring, the calf, would come close to the mother camel, her milk would pour forth because of the great abundance of blessings and abundance of goodness. So I looked at one of my she camels with her calf and remembered my poor neighbor, who had seven young daughters. I said to myself, By Allah, I will give this camel and her calf as sadaqah, charity to my neighbor and i recited the ayah where allah said by no means shall you attain piety righteousness unless you spend in allah's cause of that which you love which is in surah al-imran verse 92 and the most beloved from among my cattle to me is the she camel so i took her along with her calf and knocked on the door of my neighbor i told him to accept it as a gift from me i saw his face glooming with happiness and he was unable to utter anything in response so he benefited from its milk and used to load wood on its back, waiting for its offspring to grow up in order to sell them. Subsequently, he gained great good from this camel. After the spring had passed, the dry summer came with its drought, and so the Bedouins began looking for water and grass. We gathered our belongings and left our place, looking for water and holes in the earth situated underground that lead to water traps underneath the ground. Their openings are on the top of the ground, as the Bedouins know very well. I, and again the scan narrated by Ibn Jadan, entered into one of these holes so as to bring some water out to drink. Ibn Jadan's three sons were waiting for him outside the hole. However, he did not return. His three sons waited for him for day one, two, three, and finally became hopeless. They said, maybe he was stung by a snake and died, or he was lost under the earth and destroyed. They, and we seek refuge in Allah from this, waited for his destruction. Why? Due to greed, in order to distribute his inheritance. So they returned home and divided what he had left behind amongst themselves. Then they remembered their father, Ibn Jadam, who used to give the she-camel to their poor neighbor. They went to the neighbor and told him that it would be better if he gives them back the she-camel and takes another camel in replace of it. Otherwise, they'll take it by force and he will be left with nothing. The neighbor complained that he would report them to their father. They informed him that he had died. He inquired as to how and where he had died and why they hadn't told him. Then they explained how he had entered into one of those holes underground in the desert and did not come out. The neighbor said, By Allah, take me to this place, and you can take your she-camel and do whatever you wish to do with it, and I don't even want your camel in return. They took him there. When he saw the place, he went and brought a rope, lit a candle, tied it outside the hole, and then stepped in, crawling on his back until he reached the places where he could crawl about and roll. Eventually, the smell of moisture became closer and then all of a sudden, he heard by the water the sound of a man groaning and moaning. He went closer and closer towards the sound in the darkness, putting his hand out all over until his hand fell onto the man, which was Ibn Jadan. He checked his breath and he was still breathing after one week. He pulled him out, covering his eyes so as to protect him from the sunlight. He took with him some dates, moistened them in water and gave it to him to consume. He then carried him on his back and took him to his house. Life gradually returned to this man while his sons didn't know. Yo, that's crazy. Think about that. Like he gave him a camel years ago and this man jumped in the hole for him. This is so, wow. I'm not done yet. Okay, Shh, listen. He then asked him, tell me, by Allah, one week while you were underground and you didn't die? I'll tell you something strange, Ibn Jadan explained. When I went down there, I got lost and waves took me from all directions. I said to myself that I'd better stay close to this water that I have reached. So I started to drink from it. But hunger had no mercy and water does not suffice. Then after three days, hunger intensified on me and took me from all parts. While I was lying on my back, I surrendered myself to Allah and put all my affairs in his hands. All of a sudden, I felt the warmth of milk pouring onto my mouth. So I sat in the midst of the darkness and I saw a pot coming closer to my mouth. I drank from it until I drank what was sufficient and then it would go. This occurred three times in a day, but for the last two days it stopped and I don't know what happened. 
His neighbor then informed him, If you know the reason, you'll be amazed. Your sons thought you had died, and they came to me and took away the she-camel, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was giving you from its milk. Yo, think about that. That is crazy. And I understand, like, some people are like, how'd that happen? But think about it. Like, Allah can do whatever He wills. We can see within itself. Like, in the day, like, he, His sons took it. The Him, underground, was suffering too. It makes you think, like, when you give something to someone else, right, for the sake of Allah, you don't even realize what rewards you're getting for it from your day-to-day -day life every day, and you have no clue. And the beautiful closing of the story is two ayats from Surah, from Surah Talaq, which says, The Muslim is in the shade of his sadaqah, and whoever fears Allah and keeps his duty to him, he'll make a way for him out to get out of from every difficulty, and he'll provide for him sources he could never imagine. And whoever puts his trust in Allah, then he will suffice him. How beautiful is that, besties? Isn't that so cute? Not even, I mean, that's crazy though. If you think about it, like so many of us, when we go to the masjid, inshallah, like even if we put like a dollar, two dollars, maybe 20, 10, whatever you throw, you don't even think twice about it. You know, you're like, okay, well, that was less. Maybe I could give more next time. Or maybe that wasn't good enough. Or maybe I should do more. Like, you're so caught up on thinking that maybe you didn't do enough. But what you don't realize is that, like, so much barakah could be coming from your life. And it could be from that time that you put in, like, $50 at, like, the masjid, like, a week ago. And you don't even remember it anymore. Like, think about that. The sadaqah that you give, and it doesn't even have to be money. Like, it could be food that you constantly give to other people in the, you know, in the name of sadaqah, in the name of helping them. Because maybe they're going through a hard time. You don't think much of it. But maybe that's the reason why risk and barakah and wealth continues to come inside your home. It's the little things that you do in your life that you don't necessarily think too much about that you do for the sake of Allah that not only reward you here, but reward you in the hereafter. And think about it. If the reward in this world is so amazing and we're so happy with the reward, imagine what reward we will receive in the hereafter. So inshallah, here, let this story be your reminder to go give sadaqah. Because why not? It always benefits you in the end. With that being said, of course, like always, take care of yourself. Have a great rest of your day. Assalamualaikum.